Welcome to May, everybody. It's gonna. gonna it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be May. May. Um, so if you heard our last episode, or it might be after this, I don't know. <laughs> we'll kind of decide wherever. Depending on what journey you're choosing. Um, we discussed everything between um, Sarah's recent layoff, our mental health, kind of touched on grief and stuff like that. But kind of like we did um, a couple episodes back, we thought we'd answer some questions about kind of our mental health and stuff like that. It makes it a little bit easier. So... I found this interesting website, which is called Toolkit Project, oh, it is. which it says self-care discussion questions. So it breaks it up into separate sections, which I thought was kind of helpful. So I thought we could do a couple from each. Okay, that works for me. So this section's called Be Your Own Critique. Oh, fuck. Welcome <clears throat> to every voice inside my head. All the time. Um, Are you mostly positive or are you mostly negative? To myself? Or in G- general? In as general. a whole? Okay, so I default to positive, and then um, within my thinking process, I will lean more towards like a like a realistic view. In my brain, depends on the fucking day. Sometimes it's a little voice in my head telling me I'm not doing enough. Um, whether that's with my kid, whether that's with fucking housekeeping. Whether that's with anything like that, and then it's like, well, what can you do better? What can you do to do more? How can you improve and stuff like that? And in some ways, it's like productive, and in other ways, it can be totally chaotic in my brain. What about you? Um, I would say I am automatically positive for everybody else. So, like, if somebody tells me something about, like, wanting to do all their opportunities, I am like a hamster on cocaine i'm like how can i help you I you're gonna say cheerleader i love how your default was hamster on cocaine um i'm like how can i help you i believe in you i completely support you in this because i'm always worried about how everybody else reacts to this person so if i'm like that little ray of sunshine like full force yeah um and that usually means like removing my emotions behind it um for mentally um, up until recently, I was definitely a negative Nelly. Um, if it was anything towards me at all, I would automatically think the shittiest thing possible. I was the type of person that I would braid my hair seven times just to make sure that it was perfect. If I had that bump, I'm fucking redoing it. And then throughout that whole time, I'd probably be like, well, you're a piece of shit. You can't fucking braid your hair properly. Mm-hmm. Which, like, not healthy. But now it's like, oh, I put my hair up in a ponytail. I don't feel my hair on my neck. This is great. Kind of more like positivity versus it. So I feel like now I'd say I'm tr- I'm working on being more positive um, for myself. But I'm usually more positive for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, are your expectations for yourself realistic? Depends on the task. So if you like... In this magical land where Sarah has a dream life. Yeah. Oh. Is that realistic? Mind you, um, I just want to preface by I'm pointing at a magical cloud in the air yeah. while I'm facing her going, do you see the dream life? Um, the, see, and that's where it's like, it depends on it. It's like, well, what is that dream life? Is that dream life fucking having furniture that I don't hate as like simplistic and like. No, like you're, you're like, when you think of what your dream life would be in the future. If everything stopped right now and you could put the piece, puzzle pieces together of, I want to be this, I want to be this, I want to be this, yeah. I want to be this. Is that realistic? Your expectation for yourself? Um, It would be based on, like, the amount of engagement and stuff like that that I had. Like, t- to be totally honest. If I wasn't, like, super engaged and super sold on it, if it was, like, an unidealistic dream, like, I would love to be, I would love to do, like, creative things and just do like funny content so i was talking with my friend jen the other day about like being able to go through i have multiple friends named jen by the way (laughs) um being able to like create content that maybe like emphasizes things that other people don't quite understand like maybe the day in the life of having somebody in your family who has 
autism or something like that. Like, adding that additional, which, I mean, now there's a lot of that content out there, depending mm-hmm. on, like, what side of, say, TikTok, Instagram, stuff like that that you're in. But just kind of, like, adding to that flow and being able to have that creative outsource all the time. I would love to do that. I would love to just have the opportunity to be creative all the time and then nerd out on data based on that creativity. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that's, I think that's kind of, like, a huge thing. I also love supporting other people's dreams. True. And, and that's the big thing is, like, if, if I can support somebody else I know, um, somebody else who I know can be amazing but still doesn't recognize it in themselves, I will 100% be that cheerleader of that person. My friend starts a small business. You want to bet two fucks? I'm going to put an order in. Sure as hell they'll catch me, and if they try to give it to me for free, I'll give, it, give them shit for it. But... I will promote the crap out of that business. I will help that friend as much as I can. And I think that's that's the part of like building a community, right? And that's a big thing. Like as we mentioned in the last episode, I was laid off and I feel that I have more of an a, a more of a community, more of like an adult community that's wanting to help each other versus like I mean at the time of my last one that I had, it was kind of like all men for themselves or all people for themselves and now it's more like what can we do to help each other what can we do to support each other and stuff like that and ironically being laid off during mental health month but then being able to recognize all of these like extremely healthy things and creating all these habits and stuff like that I think is just almost like a blessing in disguise is the best way to do it for for me I would say my realistic dream life my dream life isn't realistic. Okay. At this point. Explain. So, so <laughs> for my dream life, I have always wanted to have a bakery coffee shop with a bookstore connected to it. Yes, I frequently watch Hallmark movies. But to me, my goal was to have that coffee shop and to ha- and have people who get job experience with special needs so they can run it while I could help run the bookstore and promote small art- authors and stuff like that. Basically, what boils down to is Sarah and I are fucking people pleasers and supporters. <laughs> well, it's not people pleasers, it's like supporters. Like, the funny thing is, is like when I was in my 20s, my mm-hmm. dream was to have an ice cream shop mm-hmm. slash comic book game store. Oh. So that way there was like... I want to call it, like, a safe place Yeah. for those, you know, nerdy, geeky individuals who want to have fun, but then also being able to offer, like, something else. Like, I, I'm allergic to dairy, but, like, being able to have even, like, alternatives and stuff like that. Like, I wanted to be able to have that, like, fun atmosphere where you just get to walk in, forget about all the other shit in the world, and you get to read, like, a graphic novel that you've been waiting for, or eat your favorite ice cream because you know what you kind of had a shitty day and you're sitting there playing a game with your friend like that was if I was to become if I was to buy a lottery ticket become a millionaire tomorrow I would do that and the other one which is so polar opposite in a lot of people is um I'd own a tire and rim shop for customized tire and rims our dad worked on um vehicles and he would um like restore them and stuff like that and I think my favorite thing was just kind of like picking that like hoi to all tires, <laughs> as we know from cars. So just like being able to add that extra like, you know, that little like oomph to like somebody's vehicle mm-hmm. without, and, and it's just kind of like those extra like fun things. Like sure, it's like some people might be like it's commercialism and pushing stuff, but like some people like to have that. Just like I, yeah. I used to wear earrings all the time and now I don't. Well, and like that's a huge thing. It's like that having that bakery coffee shop bookstore I like I saw that in my mind and I just like felt fulfilled I but for me right now I work at a hospital and we're doing other other things for me I love doing this part of things and I would love for one day for things to kind of take off and be able to do those things but for me right now but my bank account it is not possible <laughs> but but that's the whole thing is like you can have a dream we we like to have dreams and everyone should mm-hmm. dream and dream beyond like means and stuff like that but then we also like to ensure that we're being like highly realistic because like i'm not going to go out and get into like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of debt like purchasing product from like an ice cream company um, and then figuring out how to do all those aspects of those things, put them together, and then, like, tank the world. Like, that's 
not what I'm going to do, but like say if I was comfortable or I had backing and stuff like that, hell yeah, I'd make that shit happen. Um, what does our culture say about self-care to you? Our culture? Like what does the media say? Oh, go to a spa, get your nails done, get your hair done. Um, I find that the media, especially for women, they have a very specific agenda that they want to push. And I'm going to say commercialism again. They want to push it because they want to sell products. So it's like go on Amazon or go to any, like getting your hair done, getting your nails done. Fun is fucking shit. Let's be honest. I love getting that stuff done. I used to get like the coolest like graphic art designs on my nails. I get them done like every three to four weeks, but it wasn't getting my nails done that brought happiness. Mm -hmm. It was I, I went to a very specific place because they were the only place that did my nails and they were durable. I would go. I would book my appointment ahead of time. And um, I even did this. So I'll use an example from like when I was on mat leave. So I would literally get on the bus with my kid and I would bus out. And it would probably take me like an hour to get there from where I was. And I would go in and the folks who did my nails were amazing. Actually, one of the people who worked there would come in to specifically watch my kid and they would take their time doing my nails. So that way I knew Charlie was safe. I knew that she was doing that, but I was also having that time to like interact with other adults, like all of them. And we'd all talk to each other and you get that whole like environment, right? And they would do all the stuff and then I would like go on my merry way, whether if that was back or kind of like visiting other people I knew that were in that area. So it's it was the mental break aspect of it. It was the fact that my hands were being controlled and I couldn't do anything else. Like I just had to focus on like chilling and talking to other people. And that is kind of like the process, like maybe when someone tells you their, their self-care is getting their nails done, they don't mean it's getting their nails actually done. It's it's the process and the experience behind it. But I think what society does and culture does in a certain way is they they don't present it that way. And I wish it kind of had that added context behind it. Because, like, you go to get your, um, your hair done, you could be having the shittiest day in the world. Like, you could be laid off and have the shittiest day in the entire world but you're getting your hair done you're sitting there you're talking to somebody else you're revamping yourself you're like giving yourself like a wee bit of like a refresh and that and that's allowing you to have that time to say like grieve things why am I giving that as an example because that is exactly what Lauren who I worked with did and she's like I'm getting my fucking roots done bitches I'm not even canceling my appointment I was like I love you no no my personal favorite (laughs) I'm not fucking canceling my appointment. I'm not going into this new life with regrowth. Yeah. <laughs> Best line in the entire world. But that's the whole thing is it's it's not the action. So, like, don't, don't judge people first off. Fuck off. So, but, like, don't judge people on the action in which they're doing that they call it self-care. Because likely it's the journey and process behind it and the experience behind it, not the actual action in which is being done true hi my name is sarah thank you to my ted talk welcome to my ted talk welcome to my ted talk. um how has your mental health changed since you were younger are you not gonna answer the last question no because you pretty like... much told me told i said all the same shit that you i was like you kept going and i was like um, how much has my mental health changed since i was a kid yeah oh fuck that was a long ass time ago um um, I don't know. I feel like, um, responsibility guilt is huge. Not the mom thing. I think it's like the big sister thing, mm-hmm. but it's like chronically adapting what you do in your everyday life. And I'm, I'm not just like adapting to suit other people. Like you mm-hmm. have to adapt in general when it comes to kind of like, honestly, anything to get anything done. You can't just always do the same thing all the time. Even if you're doing all the same thing all the time. There was something that was built in order for you to do that. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, when you're a kid, everything's brand new. And that's why, like I said in one of our other episodes, like I would love to be my kid because you're just learning things for the first time. Like when she came up to me and asked me, hey, mom, oh my God, I can't even remember. You were there 
What was the question? And then she ended up, like, she was talking about her shape. Oh, my God. Rhombus. Yeah, so it was a rhombus. And she was like, hey, Mom, I have blank and blank. I don't know what a fucking rhombus is right now. Don't even get me started. Um, I have blank and blank. What shape am I? Type of thing. And then she's like, and then she goes, rhombus. First off, Eve, like, died at the fact that my six-year-old no, whipped the, that out. The fact that I was sitting here looking at Sarah's facial expressions, knowing for a fact that she does not know what the shape that's going to be named. Oh, hell no. Um, geometry was not my strong suit. <laughs> oh my god, it was the funniest thing, because Sarah just turned and looked at me and she was like, um, what's that? <laughs> also, it was a Sunday and it was a very early baseball game. Oh my god, it was very early. <laughs> um, I think, like, for me, growing up, a good preface is that I, I didn't have a conventional life. Correct. In, like, the best way to say it. Um... Our dad was never, like, I didn't grow up with a healthy dad. There was also, there was always, like, something going on. He had, like, freak accidents. He was not hit by a cement truck, which is, like, yes. very random. So, like, growing up, I always, like, had that a part of my life. Um, also, our younger brother has autism. Um, I will never say that he suffers from autism because that's fucking bullshit. No, he that's is suffering. thriving with oh, his yeah. autism. Um, and so I was always kind of his buddy, so I always had that kind of, like, big sister leadership aspect of it, and as, like, everybody who I've ever met, who even I've met now, will even tell my sister, man, she is such an adult for being a child. Oh, she's, she's an old soul. So, like, since Eve was probably, I want to say, like, you did have the aspects of, like, like, I don't know. Fairy energy. What the fuck would I call that? Whimsical? Ethereal? No. <laughs> yeah, you did have that, like, whimsy to some aspect, but I feel like between the ages of, like, 8 and 10 years old, that's when you were like, okay, I'm going to an adult now. Yeah, like, I was the kid who, at birthday parties, hung out with the adults. And so, like, for me, if I, like, I was even talking to my coworker yesterday about it, and I was like, if I could look at, like, younger Maeve and just be like, hey... Heads up, it's not going to get better. All of your worst fears are going to come true. Prepare now. <laughs> because I always, like, growing up, I always had a fear that dad was going to die. I always had a fear that something was going to go wrong. Mm. I was always in this state of survival mode. While I was enjoying doing, like, crafts, I loved doing those types of things. But in my mind, I was like, oh, my God. Like, these aspects of my life. And I know a lot of people don't go through that until later. But I, like... I feel like from the age of, like, 8 to 10, I was 22. Yeah. Like, now I'm like, this is how it's been for a long time, and when people talk to me about things, I'm like, dude, I freaking dealt with that 10 years ago. Oh, and that's, and that's the whole thing. is like, I'll, I'll give an example of exactly what happened yesterday morning. So, um, we were coming to your house, mm -hmm. my husband and I. We just dropped our daughter off at her stuff in the morning, and we were driving down the road, and I looked up, and I saw an ambulance. Mm -hmm. And then the ambulance's lights turned on. Mm -hmm. It was four blocks away from your house. Mm -hmm. And I was looking forward. And he looks at me and he goes, what's the matter? I'm like, all I was saying in my head was, don't turn left. Mm -hmm. Don't turn left. Don't turn left. Don't turn left. Please, God, don't mm -hmm. turn fucking left. And it didn't. It kept driving. Mm -hmm. But when I'm going to somebody's house or something like that, like, I feel like that's the default. I don't know if that's a lot of people's, like, default within their brain. But if I'm going past a car accident, I know some people like to look out of, like, wonderment. My immediate reaction when I go past a car accident, especially if it's within the same city that I live in, and I've got, we've got a lot of family members here and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I will look to see if I recognize that vehicle. Mm -hmm. Because if I recognize that vehicle, I'm sure it's fuck getting out of that car to make sure that that person is okay. Mm -hmm. They have all the stuff that they need or support or they need help. They need someone to go pick up their kid or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that is my default is, like, how can I help? I've been in this situation for, like, when um, we were driving up for my sister-in-law's bachelorette. Mm -hmm. We were driving up. I was in the car with um, my other sister-in-law, and we were driving together. And we saw this car just, like, fly off the road and flip over in the ditch. Mm -hmm. And 
we we all like my sister in laws and stuff like that. We all kind of have the same mindset where we want to help people. Mm-hmm. So we immediately pulled over, and there was like literally this batch. Uh, it was an entire bachelorette party, and we're all wearing like these those cute like funny bachelorette tank tops with like shorts and stuff. And we all came hauling out of this vehicle to help these people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying this because I want fucking credit for it. I'm saying it as like that is like my default is like oh my God, what about this person? Like, I don't just keep, I know there's folks who just keep driving because that's what works best for them. But like my default is always like, is there somebody that I know that needs my help? Yeah, definitely. Like, oh my God, what is it called? It's not like standby syndrome, but it's like, it starts with an S. When people just stand around. Stunned? No, it's like, (laughs) they bring it up in first aid. Oh um, my god, I can't remember like that Like the right stuff. Oh my god, it's like when people, like, all stand around, like, somebody's on the ground injured, everybody stands around and doesn't do anything. Yeah. Well, you described it. it yeah, I don't, fi- I don't remember later. But, like, the, that's the aspect of me that, I'd, like, I wish I could just look at that person and be like, you know what? It's gonna happen. We can get through it. We can make the life that we want to. The, like, those years are probably going to suck and, like, stuff like that, but we, we can handle it. Um, I feel like that's that's definitely, like, I don't know, I feel like that was really dark. (laughs) Well, I, I didn't mean for it to be dark, but I wanted to, like, give an example just so somebody else feels, like, seen. Because I know we're not the only people who randomly think of stuff like this. And it's like, okay, well, if this is to happen, this, this, and this, like... Then there's, like, that plan, right? So it's not chronically living in survival mode, but Mm -hmm. it's, like, uh, always be planning. Always be planning. Um, Also, I always have a mental clock. If anybody tells me that they're going to the store and you are not back within the hour, I do text you. Um, Yeah, but that's proven time and time again that that's the best thing to do. Yes. When it comes to us. Um. When you're incorporating, like, I feel like whenever I see these things on um, social media and stuff about, um, like, improving your self-care, resetting your life and stuff like that, I feel like, to me, I would have to, like, it's very for one specific person. Like, I feel like you would have to be in the same life and stuff like that for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, this kind of ties, too, with, like, media. Mental health is not a Tiger Beat magazine where you follow the thing of, like, I'm sad this day, do, 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 and you kind of go all the way through and then you magically get, like, like a, I don't want to say, like, a diagnosis, but, like, you get, like, your conclusion. Like, I I will fully preface this as, like, when I received my, um, I have a genetic blood condition and when I received my ADHD diagnosis, I prayed to God that... I could take a pill, I could get the treatment, and magically my life will be better, the sun will be shining, everything will be better. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with Chloe, who's my best friend, love you, Chloe, Um, and she goes, um, because I text, like, I hadn't seen her in two years, which just really shows that we're best friends. It's like, we talk, we'll chat all the time, but I just never see her. I was like, she's one of those people, though, that, like, you can meet up and it's not weird. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, you can tell we're best friends. We have no pictures together. Yeah. Haven't seen her in a long time. (laughs) But, Those are the best friends sometimes. Uh, oh, superior. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, like, I feel like we're cha- we're talking about updating everything. And I'm like, my life, I feel like, is so changed. Like, ever since I took ADHD medication. And she was like, when you texted me that, I was like, oh, thank God. Because a lot of people surrounding her were taking medication and they just, like, felt this huge relief. Mm-hmm. Um, which obviously there's many different types of ADHD and stuff like that. But for instance, like when you take your, like if you choose to go like the medical route and I tried pretty much everything else, Mm -hmm. I would like look at my mom and be like, I'm, I'm broken. I don't know what's wrong with me. I would, I just couldn't process as a human. Um, and I was like, okay, if I start taking this medication, like my life will change. Yeah. I will be, I'll be this person that I wanted to be, that everybody else wanted me to be, and I took that pill, and real shocker, it didn't, it didn't change my life. No. I, it didn't, like, the, the curtains didn't open or anything, but I was finally able to, like, in a room full of noise, I was able to turn them down, 
and focus on the things that I wanted to without feeling the large amount of guilt for everything else. Yeah. Which that is not what happens with everybody else. And with ADHD, you can kind of lean towards more like anxiety, depression wise. Like mm-hmm. when I went through the diagnosis, which is different for everybody else, I got handed like three, well, three or four types of tests. Each of them were like two to three pages long. And it was like one for anxiety, one for depression, one for ADHD. And when I was reading the anxiety one, it was like, yeah, like sometimes. Some of the depression questions, I was like, whoa, that is not me. Like, that does not fit my qualities. And then it was like, I turned to the ADHD and I was just like, wow, okay, this does make sense. Mm -hmm. And like, at this time too, like a lot of people, like the discussion started happening and that diagnosis um and like same with the one that I had I think I was 16 or 17 when I was diagnosed with the other one actually I have hemochromatosis I was like just fucking say it (laughs) so a little background if you've never heard of it it is a genetic condition condition also known as the Irish curse that was blessed upon me by my Irish heritage um during the potato famine (laughs) so my body stores iron it's basically the opposite of anemia And so I constantly have to get iron checked and I always have to, like, what it basically tells you is that without a doubt, when in doubt, I will always be exhausted. Um, And I don't have, I will never have the energy that a lot of people have. I always have chronic joint pain, like everybody else gets different, like, symptoms and stuff. And it does affect your mental health because if you think that basically, like, sleep is huge if you are not capable of ever like like fuck you if you wake up and you're excited about life and you're like well why did i just sound like the freaking zebra from madagascar <laughs> fuck out <laughs> fuck out um but <laughs> if you wake up and you're like bushy eyed and you're like ready to go and like i like if i'm injured or anything like i don't heal properly mm-hmm. i don't a lot of part of my life just takes a really long time and I'm always exhausted. I'm yawn constantly. And then it's like you add on top of that when you have ADHD and you not aware of it, you mask a lot. So then you're also exhausted. Mm-hmm. So it's like, a con- I'm also a healthcare worker. So like we all permanently exhausted. So my mental health was determined on the fact of how can I fix all of these other things, which is a fun fact. Hemochromatosis doesn't have a cure and your treatment is literally flushing blood out of you. Um, I am a vampire's best friend, but it's like very much like my, if I could fix this, I should be happier, which is a very incorrect way that you should say it. Yeah, you should just be like, I'm going to use this and then see what the changes are. Well, and I also found too, like, when when I was diagnosed, like, people at work were like, so, like, what were your symptoms? And I was like, I don't know how to put it into words. It's it's not a disease, which is how I feel a lot of people approach situations like this. Definitely. Like, it's not like, it's not like I sat down one day and I was just like, ah, ADHD. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like I'm selecting it. Well, it's not like but... you had a, bl- I think the big thing is, like, so, like, hemochromatosis, you uh-huh. have to have blood tests and stuff for that, right? But it's, like, it, a full-on, like, genetic like workup. Like, <laughs> genetic workup panel. I also had it. So, I'm a carrier, but, like, I went, we we all went through the same process once we, once we found out that our family had this gene. Which also, fun fact, if you have somebody in your family who has hemochromatosis, please get tested because you might be a carrier. And if you already have one, you get up to, like, one of the top of the lines for genetic testing. Or or you spark utter fucking joy in your doctor's face when he gets to check up a box that he's never checked before. Oh, my God. He is so proud that I'm his first hemochromatosis patient. Oh, also fun fact, hemochromatosis is most common in old white men. Um... <laughs> I was diagnosed at 16. (laughs) Um, And, uh, like, definitely the funniest thing that I'm like, apparently I'm an old white man. (laughs) Yes, apparently. (laughs) Which, like, genetics are genetics. But, like, everybody in my family is a carrier, so it's, like, pretty well known. But it's not like you have that check mark. 
Like, okay, you were tested for hemochromatosis, you have hemochromatosis. No. Versus, like, <laughs> ADHD where it's, like, it, yes, it can be hereditary, but it's also, like, I have this, I have these going on. I have other friends with ADHD. Mm-hmm. Loveliest person ever. Has the most energy ever and the most talkative. Love her to death. Yeah. I wish I could have that. And for me, I was just like, okay, so I'm not matching up with this. Yeah. I'm not matching up with this. Yeah. Where the fuck am I? It's <laughs> not that, and that's the whole thing is like, because the word diagnosis is used, right? Mm-hmm. So again, we're, we are, we are not medical professionals and counseling and therapists and figuring all this stuff no. out. But like, because that word diagnosis is used when it comes to like a medical aspect, when it comes to things like hemochromatosis, but also the word diagnosis is used when it comes to mental health. Everybody thinks that there's like a box that you have to check, which is ironic because they give you tests with boxes that you have to check. But like, Mine it's not. Circles. It's not like, oh, you have this box of this. So like you said, there were so many different aspects that were explored in order for things to get figured out, <laughs> and and that's the big thing is like there's. Other things, and and it's not even, like, a denial aspect. So it's, like, I'm not feeling my best. I'm going to go for a blood test. And you get the blood test back and you find out that you're predisposed to your grandmother's genetic fucking high cholesterol, even Mm -hmm. though you eat really well and do all this stuff. Um, You find out what your allergies are and stuff like that. So, like, as an example, I found out my allergies were, like, dairy also because I have – I'm literally allergic to the outside world. Um – Winning. Winning. Um, so, okay, so I'm allergic to those things. But the things that I eat, they eat those things. And the things that they eat are all part of the same circle of the same pollen cycle. So mm. they're they're not my best friend in in my stomach. But they kind of go there. And, you, and you're just, like, slowly going on that journey of figuring things out and seeing different things. I think that's another... It's, like, a good and a bad thing, right? As you'll see things on, like, social media and it'll be, like, okay, well, maybe it's, like, a hormone regulation thing. So, then you go get that blood test mm-hmm. to figure out about that <clears throat> hormone regulation thing. Is it that, um, I'm I'm 36 years old. Could it be perimenopause or whatever? Which I didn't oh, even exactly. know was a fucking thing. So, there's all of these aspects when it comes down to it. And then your doctor sits and maps everything together. And I'm going to tell her straight on the thing. Right? Eve, I also have ADHD. You're really terrible at, um... Okay, also I'd like to preface, this bitch left her fucking calendar on my phone. I created Google calendars. <laughs> and so I set my doctor's appointments up months in advance because I'm very forgetful. <laughs> and so I set mine the week before and I was getting notifications off the fucking wall while I was at work that I had a doctor's appointment oh my to God. discuss my diagnosis. And I was like, what the fuck? I did discuss with you prior that I was, like, that was one of the many things that I was, yeah. like, starting to wonder. Because I'd come home, I'd be chronically tired. There's, I, I do have that, the task paralysis issue. Okay. There's certain things that I just, like, cannot fucking do. I want to do them so fucking bad, but I just, like, can't do them. And, uh, yeah, there's, like, the things that were going off and stuff like this. So, when I was younger, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. So I've worked through that, like, my whole life, but this is a common thing that happens for folks around my age because, Uh as we know, when it comes to testing and all that other stuff, it is very male-based and not female-based. Yes. And females represent differently. Just like how we show up amazingly and awesome in life, men show up amazingly awesome in a totally different other way in life. And it all kind of... share. (laughs) So it's, like, it, it comes to all those different aspects and stuff like that. And it was just, like, trying to figure, putting yourself as a priority and figuring stuff like that out from there also the only person that can fully know what's going on in your brain is you so even if like we had discussions about this in the past and adhd by proxy because i we would have these discussions and like this is the perfect example my like my like ding ding points were Mm -hmm. like have you ever been motivated and she was like yeah i used to be motivated i'm like ha I was not me. <laughs> but, like, again, too, her, like, we've had many friends in the past who have it, who every single person is very different. Mm-hmm. And, like, you'll find, too, if you choose to join the medicated game. I am on Concerta. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Concerta. Thank you for allowing me to concentrate. <laughs> um, But, if like, you have to find those different forms of medication. Mm-hmm. And, for instance, the middle one. 
Um, she tried a different medication. Yeah. And it didn't work from her. And then she was like, which one do you use? And I was like, I use this one. I'm doing great. I have friends who, like, thrive on the other one and did not do well on mm-hmm. the one that I'm on. And then... Later um, on. We're on the same one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, and then I have other friends who have also thrived on this one and they kind of have, like, tips and tricks when it comes to stuff like this and... It's really funny because I was actually talking with somebody who I used to work with who is one of those friends who, like, we're kind of, like, in and out of each other's lives because we're so busy. And she's absolutely amazing. And I was like, oh, yeah, we were talking about something. And she goes, yeah, so I got this, like, ADHD diagnosis. And I was like, shut the front door. So did I. And she's like, what? And that's the whole thing is, like, I'm comfortable talking about it. Have I told everybody in my life? No, because it was kind of like a soft launch. It was a soft yeah. launch of, like, because there there are those aspects, and no, I do not give a fuck, but there's also, I never, like, if, if anybody ever goes, oh, you're just doing that because you have ADHD, I'm going to literally tell them to suck my fucking non-existent But cock. the other thing, too, is that I think a huge thing about it becoming more popular, <laughs> no, Mo, you, you have these group of people, and I experienced it. Who just fucking want to rip you apart because yeah. they think that you're trying to seek something. Like, I was I was like, there must be something wrong with me. And so, once I got diagnosed and I was, like, kind of sorting out everything. But that's not, what's, <laughs> that's, that's not what's wrong with you. No, but, like, I was trying to sort out how I could improve myself yeah. in, in order to function. Yeah. And then once I was on it and about, like, six months later, Sarah was kind of like, hey. Do you think I have ADHD? Which, like, I feel poor because I feel like I was still at the beginning of the journey and I'm just like, I don't fucking know shit. I'm no, trying but really me, hard. <laughs> it wasn't even like, I don't know shit, but it was also just like, you you didn't go, oh, yeah, whatever. You were just kind of like, well, these are things that I found and I've never noticed those things in you because it's all about, like, what other people see as well. That's how yeah. you determine, like, how hard you mask and stuff, too. And you were just like... Well, I don't know, like, maybe... And there was all these other options. So I fucking exhausted all of those other options. Oh, and yeah. it, again, it was not out of denial. It is purely because I love me a fucking rabbit hole. I will jump down that rabbit hole and I will look through all of the things. Not because I'm trying to prove myself innocent or guilty <laughs> or anything like that. Just because I want to make sure that if I'm going forward to make that decision, that I have as much education behind myself as possible. Well, you're also, you kind of did the same thing, because I remember talking to you, and I was like, have you thought about changing your diet? Have you yeah. thought about, like, there's many things. And my things. sleep, my sleep sucked at that time. You're like, why don't you try, like, yeah. making sure you have that reminder on your phone for sleep, like, it was very much like, I'm not telling you that you're not allowed to join this club, but these are, this is how I figured it out. Yeah. I, I had to remove every single aspect of my life that could possibly be, like, directing this. Mm-hmm. So, like, we were recovering from COVID insomnia, which was great time, a bonding time. So, so many, like, fucking aspects were like, well, you oh, need yeah. to regulate all this shit in order to figure out if this is your life. I know, and then it's like, once you do it, and then it's like, you know what? Still not. Yeah. Then we go for it. So, <laughs> check the box. Check the box. <laughs> Moving on. So, like, with, um, with Sarah, I was like, this is what I did. I would to try to do this it could be this it could be this I don't know could be imposter syndrome I have no idea at this time too like I feel like the first conversation was when you started your new job and I was just like I feel like this is as many things as that I can possibly do to assist you in um removing this but I can't like I can't tell you yes or no type thing well and that was the whole thing so when I started this job that I was just recently laid off from um I hadn't worked in a office-like community, and I'm going to say community because that's what it was, for, I'm not going to say environment, because before it was like, you're on the grind Monday through Friday, you're in an office, you're doing all the things, and then I kind of did some other things after that one left, and I went on a couple different journeys and helped out with different stuff, and then it went into, and it's like, you're welcomed. And they're like, but we want you to have balance. And they actually fucking mean it. They're well, like, exactly. we have all these great resources and they actually want you to use them. They don't see them as a liability. 
And I remember when I was like going through and putting my stuff through for like my paperwork, it said, do you have any sort of like learning disabilities? Are you part of a diversity and stuff like this? And I was like, this is the first time in my entire life I've ever felt okay to put that I'm dyslexic on this. Also, who invented the word dyslexia? Because I was trying to spell it. And I was on the struggle bus. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. Like, it is, it's one of those, like, weird words, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, I remember, like, I debated for a second, though. I was like, hmm, but, like, how open is this community? And then I messaged my friend who referred me there. And I was like, hey, should I put, she's like, fuck yeah, put it down. I was like, okay. And then it was like, you would just be sitting there, and it, and it became, like, a comfortable conversation to the mm-hmm. point where, like, I'd have a friend who'd be messaging me. There, were, there was a lot of us. The, the neurodiverse was rocking this business, not going to lie. And um, I would get a message that was like, yo, like, I'm feeling, like, extremely overwhelmed. Like, I'm very much in my head, blah, blah, blah. Like, do you have a chance to have, like, a video chat? And we'd, like, talk through stuff together. Mm-hmm. Or, um, and we'd be just, like, so honest. Mm-hmm. And that's what I loved. You weren't, like, suffering in silence, True. All you had to do was say, I'm just not having the best day. And I bet you there was four to six people would be like, yo, like in a DM or on a post or whatever in Slack, they'd be like, well, like, is there anything I can help you with? Or do you want to talk? You want to jump in on a meet? Like there was that aspect when it came to it. And it was funny because like what, like, like what we said several times. So there's so many coping skills that are removed, especially when it came to like the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So like, Everybody would automatically assume that I am only an extrovert because of my personality and the way I am. But I'm an mm-hmm. extroverted introvert because I love to stay at home, watch a movie, and eat some stuff. That's me now. But that's also, like, I feel like it depends on who you're with. Yeah. So if you're with me, you're like, I want to sit and stay home. I'm going to dye my hair. I would like to go out in public with you, though. Like, oh, well, yeah. Like, do you she go shows me off like a trophy. I'm going to go to, like, Wally World and, like, fucking grab a bunch of random shit and candy and uh-huh, chips and then sit and, like, watch sessions. a movie. Or randomly run out and go to the lake in our bathing suits in the middle of the night with fucking inner tubes. Oh, my God. That was so fun. It was I so forgot we fun. did that. <laughs> And, and that's the whole thing is, like, being able to still have, like, that spontaneity and stuff like that. But it's, like, um, recharging with people that you care about or that you relate with. Like, the grocery store and the mall, if it's too busy, stresses me the fuck right out. That's not allowing me to recharge. That's going to deplete my fucking energy down to nothing. And I think with Sarah's uh, newfound diagnosis and joining... I feel like I should get you a sweater. We should make a sweater for overall on the label that's called the ADHD Club. Oh, my God. Yes. <gasps> oh, my God. Or I wonder if we could find jackets because, you know, when people are like, I'll get you a jacket. That's why I was like, the, the voice? <laughs> um, so you can look out. So it will be in conjunction. So you'll hear about that every once in a while with Burnout Perfectionist. But we will be launching an apparel and accessories line that is called Overwhelmed. The, the label. label. Um, so it'll be featuring a lot of fun things, a lot of things that maybe you don't see generally on a sweatshirt. We play into our funny, weird humor as well as sarcasm. So we'll be having things that even just say straight across, very simplistic, um, like ADHD. We'll have fun things with fun definitions of what we feel ADHD or dyslexia are, stuff like that based on how we are as people. And, um, yeah, we'll be offering them in kind of like a variety of colors and different variations. So you got phone cases, canvas bags, stickers, patches, kind of anything that floats your boat. You like it. You like a dad baseball hat. We'll look into having those. And yeah, we just want to allow folks to express who they are and overall be fucking proud of who you are. You have ADHD. Fucking cool. It's your superpower. Nobody else thinks the same way as you. And, like, a huge important thing for us, too, is, like, I always said to Sarah, like, whenever I was, I'm a huge, like, we're obviously stressed, blessed, and hey, obsessed. Um, but a huge thing for me is that, like, me, like, two years ago would never wear something that said, like, anxious or, like, something mm-hmm. like that. So, like, we're even, we're, we're looking into um, side of that, like, nonverbal. So, it's, like, you can wear it and be proud. Um, 
I think it'd be like definitely we'll discuss like ADHD in the future and like we can deep dive on how we like figured it out and stuff and like because we're both very different people and I think that's the funny thing is like even when we have a discussion between the two of us if I like brought in two other people that I know yeah we are relatable in so many ways but like so unrelatable in other ways and I think that's kind of like the great thing and also um I I've always been taught and embraced and it has been emphasized several times especially by one of my friends that this is my superpower we are x-men we are, which is so funny because everyone's like mutants. That's a weird thing. No, but no. it's like I'm literally Iron Man. Come hang out with us when you want to, and we'll we'll always stay warped and twisted as ever. Always warped and twisted as ever. Have a lovely day. Peace out, folks. Peace.